just for the lack of, for the sense of those who don't know this story. You grew up in Brooklyn. Right. Uh, middle class parents. Lower middle class. Lower middle class. Uh, you had a chance for a football scholarship. Right. Northern Michigan. Right. You go to Northern Michigan, you get injured, right. but you stay and graduate. Right. Uh, and then you get into marketing with Xerox. Mm -hmm. uh, and then all of a sudden, I'm making this, right. speeding this story up, all of a sudden you end up noticing that there's out in Seattle somebody that's buying a lot of a product that you're selling because right. you're now in marketing for some Swedish company. Right. Pick the story up. Uh, I go out to Seattle for the first time in 1980. Uh, for those people who have not been to Seattle, it was a beautiful sunny day, a rare one. <laughs> yes. And the mountains were majestic and it was the kind of place where I just dreamed of having grown up where I did. But more importantly, I saw this jewel of a company that was small, but rich in terms of integrity of product and values. And uh, I tried to position myself to get a job with this company. That's not why I went out there, but that's what I came away with. Uh, lucky for me, I became the head of marketing when they had four retail stores. A year later. Selling what? Well, they were selling, no, I was working for the company. Right. Uh, no, they, they were, were selling what? They were four retail stores, just selling coffee by the pound. Right. Okay. That's all. By the pound. By the pound. Right. A year later, I find myself in Italy for Starbucks on a coffee trip looking at appliances for the company. Uh, Italy really is the coffee culture of the world. There's 200,000 coffee bars in Italy, 1,500 alone in the city of Milan, the size of Philadelphia. And what I saw was the connection, the sense of community that the Italians have to coffee almost where the coffee bars became an extension of people's front porch. I brought that back with such excitement and the founders of the company uh, didn't think it was such a great idea to be able to reposition Starbucks to become more of what I saw in Italy and that was to merchandise the beverage, to bring espresso, cafe latte and those drinks to life and for Starbucks to become a gathering place. As a result of them not feeling that that's what we should do, I left the company, started my own. Sixteen months after I started my own. I acquired Starbucks in 1987. What was the name of the company you started? Il Giornale, <laughs> named after the Italian right. newspaper, the journal. In 87, we had 11 retail stores, 100 employees, and a dream to build a national retail company. But mo more importantly than that, having grown up the way I did in a, in a lower middle class family, where my dad never made more than $20,000 a year, where health care was not available, uh, I wanted to try and build a company that had a conscience and to put people first. Today, although we're a very successful company, the stock has grown dramatically since we went public, the thing that I'm most proud of is the fact that Starbucks is the only company in America to offer comprehensive health care and equity to all employees, including the 65% that are part-time. And so uh, we, have we have shared our success with all and despite the fact that the growth and development has come not at the expense of our employees but because of them and they have won as well as our shareholders. Walmart for one right. uh, and other companies that I know are legendary. Food Lion is another. Mm -hmm. Legendary for making millionaires out of secretaries and lots of other people. You've had that happen in your company because they got stock early on? Yeah, we've had that happen and uh, uh, I would say that people behind the retail counter have become millionaires but what has happened is for the first time in their lives people who are part-time workers are owners of a company. And uh, as a result of that, the values and guiding principles are as important to the future of the company as the quality of the coffee. What's in your mission statement? Our mission statement is really is designed to make sure that the long-term growth of the company is not diluted by the growth, but in fact, that the growth enhances the spirit and the esprit de, esprit de corps of the company so that the quality of the coffee the fact that diversity has to happen in the workplace, with the fact that we have to treat our people with respect and dignity, the fact that we have to exceed the expectations of our customers, and most importantly, we have to do all this and make money as well. And so the shareholder wins, our employees win, and at all of this happens, our, our customers feel like they're going to a place that they really values their, their patronage. What is it that has accounted for this extraordinary explosion of coffee by the cup? Well, obviously, it is the quality of the coffee. Uh, but and without that, I don't think we'd be here today. But I think more, more importantly, or as importantly, there's been a social phenomenon in America. And that is, I think Starbucks stores have become almost the third place, uh, a place between home and work, a place where people can gather, a place where they, they can meet friends. And the diversity of our customer base is very broad, uh, whether it's a blue-collar or white-collar worker, 
people of all ages and, uh, and diverse backgrounds come into Starbucks for what it is. A great place to get a great cup of coffee, to listen to music, and it's a, it's a safe haven for people. The romance of coffee is simply what? That it's something that people do? Well, um, if you think about coffee and how long it's been around, and the fact that it's a warm uh, uh, beverage, you start your day every day with coffee, or at least most Americans do, you meet people over coffee, you're sitting at home with a fireplace going, reading the Times, Sunday morning, quiet time. Coffee is a very romantic beverage, and there's a mystique to it. It's grown all over the world, the artistry of how we blend it, the way we roast it, and obviously the way we execute it for our customers. And you know, there's a lot of similarities between making great coffee and making great wine. What are they? Well, uh, uh, growing the, the way coffee is grown, the artistry of, 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 of harvesting great coffee is very similar to making grapes, and then the blending. A good grape gives you a good bottle of wine, and a good coffee bean gives you a good cup of coffee? Yeah, and the artistry of, of taking coffee from different parts of the world, which is really the, the soul of, the, of, of our company, and being able to blend it to make a world-class blend, which is uh, one, of the, one of the ironies of our success is that if coffee companies in America were to have presented good coffee to the supermarket consumer over the last 50 years, perhaps Starbucks would not have had the opportunity it has had. But the fact is that coffee, for the most part of the last 50 years, is sold stale in the supermarket aisle. Yeah. And uh, it goes stale after what? Coffee has a shelf life of only two weeks. So most of the coffee consumed in America is consumed stale. Starbucks has created an opportunity not only for people to come and gather and meet in a wonderful environment, but our people are passionate about the education we have. So you shouldn't really keep your coffee around very long. I mean, you should really not buy that much at one time. That's right. And that's what we are trying to educate our customers to do. You worry about competition? I mean, as a sure we do. everybody around yeah. the corner. It's not uh, a block in New York that doesn't yeah. have a coffee. I worry about it in, in this sense, is that uh, a company cannot embrace the status quo anymore despite how successful you've been. And you have to be committed to reinvention and self-renewal. And for us, that means that we, what we've done today and yesterday is not good enough anymore. Here is one of the criticisms that comes at you, and you've sure. heard it before. It is that like Walmarts and like other people, uh, when the big chains come in, they devastate the little guy who's been there for a yeah. long time, serving and giving great service and serving the people in right. his community. And you guys come in there and you can undercut them and you blow them away. And well, that's a human tragedy. I've heard that, but that's not true, though. In fact, you know, Starbucks prices are generally higher than the local competitors uh, because of the quality of coffee that we buy and roast. And so, uh, for the most part, in neighborhoods all across the country. We have raised awareness about the category and we coexist with the mom and pops and the regional players. And in fact, many local competitors of ours open up near us because they see the lines outside of Starbucks stores and they think they can get the traffic coming out the door. The market yeah, is very been there big. before you come in, so Some most have. of the part. Yeah, but the market is so big that there's an opportunity for everybody. And certainly it's our intent to coexist with everybody. You know, to compare Starbucks with Walmart, I think, is a, is a stretch. Your, your intent is to coexist with everybody? Oh, sure. You, don't, you want them to have all the customers that they can have. As long as you get your fair share, then you're happy. I, yes, and you, there's you're, enough for You're everyone. not out to take every single customer you can possibly no. sell to so that your sales volume go way up, no, so that your revenues will go way up, <laughs> so that your stock prices <laughs> will right. go way up, so <laughs> that, you know, no. so that poor suffering. <laughs> I don't know where you got this from. No, there isn't a company, you know, in America that we've... Uh, tried to uh, put out a business or anything like yeah. that. I mean, I think the benevolence of Starbucks and the social aspect of Starbucks is we are so philanthropic in our efforts to try and give back to every community in which we have stores as outlined by the book right. and that all the profits yeah, from the book... Yeah, but you wrote the book. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. All the profits from the book are going yeah. to the Starbucks Foundation. That's true. What does the Starbucks Foundation do? It's going to help uh, 40 million people who are, illit who are illiterate. Yeah, unliteracy. And that's right. And so we're going to try and uh, give money back to communities all over the country to help uh, people learn how to read and write. Is this an American story that anybody with great vision and willing to work hard can do? I think it is. And, and that's really what, you know, I've been asked so many times, why did you write the book and why now? Because I see so many people who are downridden or a lack of hope. And my story, it, I'm living the American dream. I came, from, I came from the other side of the tracks, <laughs> yeah. and I made it. I, and I didn't have a Harvard education to do it. It can be done. Believe in yourself. Believe in your dreams. Do not let people tell you it can't be done. It can. If you do what? Well, first off, 
if you are passionately committed to this purpose, if you're willing to sacrifice everything to try and make it work, if you are diligent in making sure you surround yourself with great people, if you give back to your people, make sure that you're not succeeding at the expense of them. I think that you know, the Starbucks success is not a success that's uh, narrow, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an outline, I think, for lots of companies and hopefully a lot of people who can be inspired by my story. You're what, 40? 44. 44. Uh, I what? feel 50 after that question about the competition now. <laughs> What's the passion now? I mean, you've made $100 million or more. Uh -huh. uh, what is it? How do you give back now? How do you, what is it that turns you on? Um, the, the, the passion, you know, it's interesting you ask that because I feel uh, as passionate or more inspired today than I ever have in the history of our company. Uh, because I see what's possible. I see that we can really build a great enduring company and we can do it with a conscience and we can do it with benevolence and really make sure that we make a difference in the world. That's what I'm inspired by. Thank you. Pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much.